So, Bama Fight Night London, or Bama 36 as pe I think they're calling it, done in the books. And, I mean, apart from the main event, it was a pretty lackluster night of fights. It was a weird setup. It was um, supposed to be a couple of prelims on Unilad, the, the Facebook account, and then move over to televised main card action on ITV4, which, which is grand. But the thing with Unilad is, is that they never start their streams on time. There's always an issue around Bama cards when Unilad are involved. I'm not saying that's anything to do with Unilad. It could just be a technical issue, but it seems too much of an occurrence for it to be any sort of coincidence. So it's a bit, it's a bit of a shame. Um, it's it's more of a gripe I have in in that. Just get it right because. There's a couple of fighters, I mean, there's, well, there's two fights, but there's four fighters on that on that uh, portion of the card who need to be exposed to people, who need to get their name out there, who need to be able to fight in front of a large audience for those who maybe can't, you know, get to the arena, who live outside of the UK or outside of the catchment area that the event is in. That sort of stuff annoys me because fighters need to get paid. They are the ones who are providing us with the news, the stories, the fights themselves, you know, and they deserve recognition. And I just really hope that Unilad can get it together because it's annoying and it's nearly every event with Bama. It, it, it's very frustrating. Um, but like I say, it was a bit of a lackluster night of fights. Um, the, the, the main card, uh, uh, prelim, um, oh, sorry, not a prelim, a heavyweight fight opened up the card and it was awful i mean it was crazy I, I mean i i couldn't believe what i was what i, what I was what it was just there's was, there's was tentative fights and then there's that you know it was just crazy stuff i mean it was uh lukas pa uh, i'm gonna pronounce his name horribly and i apologize in advance lukas parabic against uh chai lewis parry and chai lewis parry has some big hype about him coming into this fight and you know many believe that he's possibly a couple of fights away from maybe getting getting into the ufc or being even recognized by the ufc and like he has the skills i've seen him fight before he's a heavy-handed guy and he's exciting to watch by God, tonight he was just, just flat-footed. He was just bad. Had a point taken off him for a nasty eye gouge in the middle of the fight. And, you know, Mark Goddard, um, the referee, rightly took a point from him. It's awful. Just a bad eye gouge. But the first round I scored as a, as a, as a, as a draw, 10-10, because I thought they were both cancelling each other out, popping off leg kicks. Each was landing a punch here and there, but that was about it as far as action went in the first round. wasn't great, and you know, kind of reflected that when you're looking at the fights in real time on social media. People just seem very bored. Second round, obviously the point deduction came. Probably looked a bit better. I thought he won that round. I also thought he won the third round too, cleanly. But the judges scored a majority draw, and I couldn't understand what was going on. It was, even with the point deduction, there's no way to draw. Just farcical decision. Uh, just, yeah. I mean, look, whatever about that, you know. I I think I mean I don't use the word robbery that much, but that was a clear robbery. Probably I like, definitely won that fight. Um, Perry can really be counted lucky stars. I didn't lose that fight, and it would have been his first loss of his career. Just, just awful. Just really bad judging to start the night off, and I thought it was going to get worse from there. And ITV. I'm not a fan of ITV in general. I think they're too ad based. They just have ads in everywhere. Ad here, ad there, ad everywhere. Just basically minimalize the content that you're supposed to be showing and just place a lot of ads in there. I mean, I get it. They're trying to make their money, but you know, they had Anthony Taylor who was fighting next on the card. And Anthony Taylor, if you've never seen him fight before, has some of the most legendary walkout, walkouts, like, you know, this side of the, this side of the, side of the pond i know he's american but he does fight out of SPG and just fight on bama um and he was fighting mike hales uh but they cut out the entire walkouts the entire everything just cut straight to the introductions and the fight was on and i have to say i really like taylor i think he's a really interesting personality 
he's clearly kind of you know honed his skills. He's now two and zero, and has taken two short fight, uh, two short notice fights, and has absolutely blasted through his opponents. And Hales was you know in his way tonight, and he just got out wrestled completely. It was, oof. I mean, wrestling is is such a crazy art form. If you're and uh, Taylor's obviously a very very high level wrestler. Hales had nothing off his back. It, it was kind of embarrassing to watch it at, at one stage. It was just there was no no defense happening. Nothing, nothing, nothing for him. Had nothing to offer. Just but take nothing away from Taylor. It was he did what he needed to do on short notice. He came in. He grappled. He got the takedowns. He out wrestled. He fought for a position. He even had point taken off him for a supposed headbutt. Which seemed hard. It looked like he was just fighting for head position, trying to you know posture up, move his head off of Hales's body to posture up and maybe land a few more punches. But I couldn't believe that he got taken a point taken off him. But it didn't matter in the end. He won the fight. It was a dominant fight. Just proper start to finish. Just completely out wrestled Hales, and I'm happy for him. He got a, a nice a, a nice victory a second time in Bama, two and zero, and you know. Horrible matchup for anybody, and it'd be nice to see him maybe kind of mix it up with a full camp next time out. But no complaints with his performance, did what he had to do. Hales, pretty, pretty bad, P pretty, pretty bad. And then we came to the main event of the evening, which, as I, as I mentioned in the preview on the site, a legitimate super fight, proper, just, just a champion versus champion fight this side of the pond. The only gripe I have with it is that it didn't go five rounds. It only went three rounds. Um, as was a scheduled distance. For I mean, I don't understand that. If it's, if it's a world title fight, if you're billing it as a world title fight, you have to make it five rounds. It doesn't matter where you're, like where you know in the world you are. I know, you know Nevada, all around America and and elsewhere that they have their five round fights. But surely you have to have this type of fight as a five rounder. It was just, oh, just I, I couldn't believe it. It's just just mad. But anyway, so um, Terry Brazier, who was the welterweight champion, came down to lightweight to fight Reese McKee, who was the current Bama lightweight champion. And I mean, they don't call Brazier the dominator for no reason. He just came out and he blitzed McKee everywhere. Just completely stifled him. He nullified anything that that uh, McKee was trying to get off, out wrestled him, took him down, was landing big shots, big bombs on the ground, possibly could have finished the fight at any time he wanted to, but just but chose to keep going and made a huge statement and he was just completely dominant for three rounds. And you know, McKee, you know, he is a very high level level fighter as it is. And he's still young, he'll come back from it for sure, but he got badly, badly beaten tonight. And to his credit, he was always trying to work for something off his back. He was always trying to sink in something. Tied nearly a straight arm lock at one stage. Was showing up for a triangle every time. But he 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 just couldn't cope with with Brazier, who was who was matching him well. You know, in terms of he was transitioning well, and he was able to get the fight. He was able to just keep the fight on the ground, get off shots, and take the fight. You know, fifteen minute hard, grueling fight, and. Just a really great performance, and now Terry Brazier is now a two weight, like world champion. I guess if you want to say world champion, I mean that's what they're billing him as. But you know, we, we all know that world championships aren't exactly world championships. So because every promotion this side of of the continent has them, and it's only really kind of the UFC, which are kind of legitimate world championships. I guess no, no disrespect to to Bama. So you know, it's great to have a title for, and it, you know. Title holders in various organizations do get pushed for bigger and better things. So, credit to, to Brazier now who goes on to claim two titles. Hard to know now if he's going to keep at welterweight or if he's going to stay at, stay at 155. Look very comfortable there. Look good. Look very powerful. Look very strong. He'd be a nightmare for anybody in that division. As for McKee, he'll come. He'll he'll go away. He'll look at that performance and he'll come back stronger than ever. I've no doubt about it. We've seen him in great, great combat, you know, just really just grueling fights and back and forth action. You know, he will come back. Um, but Brazier, man of the moment, absolutely brilliant. And um, I'm interested to see where he goes from here now. I wonder who I wonder who he fights next. 
It's hard to know what Bama will have for him lined up. A rematch with Alex Lahore. You, you never know. You never know. Um, but yeah, it was it was an interesting interesting night. Lackluster kind of production wise, etc. Which which kind of left a bit of a sour taste. It was a bit annoying. But you know, nice to have fights over Thursday night, and we got a really good legitimate super fight, which really lived up to to, to the hype. And you know. Hats off to Terry Brazier. Congratulations on your win. Two-weight world champion. Two-weight champion. <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see what Bama have next coming up. Um, because, you know, they're always better when they have, like, a proper, you know, night of fights. And it's kind of interrupted by the football tonight. It's kind of billed as a World Cup fight type of thing. But nice, ni- nice night, you know, for a fight. And, um... Yeah, that's really it. I mean, impressive performance from from uh, Terry Brazier. The rest of the card, mm, not great. But Anthony Taylor, uh, also very good too. So I have to give props up to him. So, yeah, I mean, until next time, guys, keep reading the site. You can check out uh, the website, which is www.writingirish.com. Plenty of previews, recaps, etc. Here and there. The podcast will be hopefully coming out next week, the first official one. Uh, you can keep up to date with uh, just anything kind of breaking and you kind of thing on Twitter, which is probably the best place for kind of more up to date news. And that's at writing Irish MMA. And I think that's it. Yeah, you can pretty much just subscribe here, hit the like button if you like what you see, or leave a comment. Um, yeah, that's really it. Until next time, guys, enjoy the rest of your weekend and uh, enjoy whatever fights you might be watching. See you soon. <laughs>